This is the Red Elbow Show with me, Josh Everton, Tracy Martin, Jane Elliott and Craig Wood. A couple of substitutes in today because we got rid of Andy and Al, you know, they're knocking on a bit now. They're struggling, they can't, yeah. they, they can't do a full fall because it's game season. So <laughs> we've had to turn we've had to t- turn to the bench and use the full, some full rotation. <laughs> So we're going to look forward to Saturday's game away at Blackpool and we'll just see what other discussion pops up as well whilst uh, whilst we yeah. preview that. So let's get stuck into it. Right, Tracy, Blackpool, a side that we really struggled against last season and was, I think, was the final nail in Neil Collins' tenure um, away at, Black, uh, at Blackpool. A difficult side to play, sort of when you look at the quality they've got in that team, and obviously Steve Bruce coming in um, at start of September, which very very early for Black for, for Blackpool to sort of make that kind of decision of changing managers. He's come in though, made a, a, a made a difference so far. Only lost one game since he's been appointed, which I think was the last game which was two against Mansfield. Yeah, yeah, there are they're, they're one of our sides that we never tend to do very well against. Um, yeah, he's he's done the new manager come in and he he got manager a month I think for September. Um, hopefully that's like the kiss of death and everything goes downhill after that because that's what normally happens. Yeah, in the they're pretty much identical to us in terms of. Uh, in fact, I think they are pretty much. Have we got one more got one better goal difference than them? But I think everything exactly the same. The games have played one drawn loss. I think they're exactly the same. I'm I looked at the league earlier and I think that's right. Um. But yeah, I mean, he'll make it difficult. Steve Bruce's sides are always tough to be. Uh, I don't know if he's resorted to type in playing sort of uh, long ball, hoofy football, which tends to go alongside, I think, Steve Bruce's sides. But um, yeah, I would imagine from what I've read, they're really good at attacking set pieces, which sits really well with our strong defence. Um <laughs> Or not. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I can't have intended there, Tracy. Yeah. So uh but they're also terrible at protecting a lead. Um, again, we can sympathize with that. So uh <laughs> I'm expecting a goal fest is what I'm expecting. Oh. So oh. <laughs> I'm making I'm making the trip to Blackpool to uh I'm, obviously I won't compete with Alan's uh photo bingo. I, oh, I mean, no. no, just can't can't even attempt to go there. Um <laughs> But yeah, I'm, so hopefully I'm going to see a goal fest that ends up with a an odd goal in our favour. But yeah, good players. Um, Kyle Joseph, James Husband, sort of. Then they've got Ashton Fletcher and Jordan Rhodes who can't always start, which seems like a nice uh, headache to have. And then, then I've been really impressed from what I've seen of him with, I think, is it Lee Evans, the uh, midfielder? Um, yeah. yeah, he seems a good player him and sort of their real key sort of playmaker. So yeah, I don't anticipate an easy game. Um and we've, I feel like I feel like it's ages since we've seen us play. I know we played Huddersfield last year, yeah. but that really weren't us, was it? So I think it just seems ages. So it's like we're like a fresh start, and that's what I'm seeing it as. It's a fresh start, a whole new start again for um, for Daryl Clark. Yeah, full of positivity tonight. I am. <laughs> and you filled in for Al there very nicely with a shirt with a shirt behind you as well. A lovely yeah. homage to Al whilst he's not here. Um, Jane, as Tracy said, there it's a yeah. chance to sort of reset this black this Blackpool game. So obviously, there a couple of uh, games before that. I think as a fan base, we were very much just a bit down, to be honest. And so it felt like the season's already started to slip away from us, and we're only in the middle of October already, and it's already a bit. Mm, is Daryl Clark the right the, the right man? Are we yeah. in the right direction? Are we on a managed decline? So it is. It's almost nice to have this break every now and again. If we can't have your weekend ruined, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's always that in there. Uh, we, when we were saying before, sure, it's been a bit quiet, but like Trace says, that might have been a good thing. Um, we did need a reset, as we've as we've said on show before. It has been. We felt very disheartened. I think can't we go into into this break? We felt very uh, really on a negative as a fan base. And I think the club's picked up on that. We've also commented that, you know, what formation they're playing. It, we've we've gone from being, you know, winning and and being, you know, be doing playing quite well to just from nowhere it just bottoming, not knowing who's who's best, who's the best side, who's the best players where, um, and us not understanding the substitutions why they've been done at that time. So 
and it appears the club are really trying to get to the point of the working things out on the pitch, on the training pitch while they've had this break. That's the impression I'm getting is they've heard what we've said. They've seen, they've seen what we've seen. You know, they were there themselves. Uh, and I get the feeling they're trying to let us know without letting us know that they're doing the work in the training ground. And let's see what that brings on Saturday at Blackpool because it is a little bit of a bogey team. So it's it, is, not always... it does feel like even something that's been rammed down his throat recently. Is yeah. that every day yeah. it's like the players are up training like, I expected that, that's their job. It's not that's nothing as a big yeah. surprise that, that they are out there doing that. Um, Craig, looking at the stats pack, obviously Steve Bruce, manager, top scorer, well, it's joint both with four Kyle Joseph and CJ Hamilton. Tenth in the league, they are a place above us, Trace Young goal difference. They've got one better goal difference than us. Uh, we're 11th. Right. Form, three wins, a draw and a loss in last five. Key player, CJ Hamilton. Um, formation, 4-4-2. Um, gone back to Brexit ways and as we mentioned earlier Steve Bruce appointed on the 3rd of September and since then Blackpool have only lost one so Craig it is a side like we've mentioned so far bogey side for us to play um, but hopefully there's always that I feel there's always that air of op optimism when you come into an international break and you've been a bit poor that it's a chance to sort of reset and realign as opposed to the opposite end of when you're on a roll you'd never want that break to come yeah, it, it's it's time to get on on training pitch and get some work done. Cause at the minute the team doesn't look like it's uh, a very cohesive unit. It's um, mm. you know it's it's complete opposite to what Blackpool have been since Steve Bruce come in. He seems to have gotten back to basics. You know, Willie Evans in that midfield, Marshall in, you know, Joseph and CJ Hamilton uh, area threats, and obviously Ashley Fletcher as well. We know is a, is a decent player. Um. Last five times we've played, we've lost them against them. So uh, <laughs> in the three of them, we didn't score. So it's going to be a tough. It's going to be a tough game. Uh, I think we're. A, I think we're to, they were shop and absolutely obliterated us in the first half. Um, it's it's not a game I, I look forward to during the season because they are a bogey team, and um, I just hope that Phillips is. I know he's been mm -hmm. training. I just don't know if he's match fit yet, but he we've really took a downward, um, been on a downward spiral since he's been out. He seems to be very much the linchpin between midfield and attack. Um, I just hope the tinker man stops tinkering so much, and we start getting a focal point that we need to work towards. You know, um, a, a way of attacking and not just tinkering all the time and expecting something to work it's, it's very much that seems to be what's been happening this season just throwing mud at a wall and seeing what sticks um, and that ain't going to get us promoted this season yeah. I think I think if you look over the past few seasons teams that have generally got straight back up or gone up have been teams that have had a set style of play a set 11 you know um, very much very consistent and we've been far from everything that I've just listed. So it's going to be a tough game. Um, we'll just uh, keep pumping these training videos out. So we'll see on Saturday yeah. whether it's been with it or not. Yeah, that's going to be interesting because if we turn up and there's no style of play, then there's going to be some yeah. questions asked. Like, what have we like, been doing? Yeah, yeah, it's almost like we've made a rod for his own back then in terms yeah. of putting them out. Um, Craig, just on that, obviously, um, Jason and Jane, you gave your opinions on Daryl Clark on the last show. Is Daryl Clark under a lot of pressure at this point because we've sort of seen we've seen where we can be with him when we when we looked all right at the start of the season, but then we've also seen what we can we certainly can be in the last sort of five games where it feels like there's no set style, there's no structure, as you said, three, four formations in a game, three different styles of play in a game, different lineups week in, week out. There's like I said, there's no consistency there. So to me, that strikes as someone that's not not necessarily methodical and pragmatic in the way she's approaching it. It's more it's trying to fight Anarchy. players that are coming up. Yeah. Rather than that. So do you think these Next couple of games are quite important for him because if he loses that that, that pull the game after that, then suddenly we're going to be probably down about sixteenth at that point. Um, I think with owners, I think he'll have a bit more leeway, but with fans, definitely they'll be chanting for him going out if we lose. If we lose next two out of the next three games, if we don't win, 
the I don't know we want to be. And if he if he's not just he's got the team to do it. You know, I don't think there's any manager at league that can't say that we can't challenge top for top six. You know, and we can't have Gabe Sutton being right either. You know, I think that's a bit... <laughs> I think I want us to finish him up 17th. <laughs> yeah, it's totally hotels wrong. just suck. Yeah, I can't, I, can't, I, can't have it. I can't have him making that prediction and being right. But <laughs> but Blackpool, we've seen how changing a man can, can change your fortunes. So... I don't know. Like I said, I think owners will give him a bit little more leeway, but fans won't. Fans are ruthless, and they'll vote with their feet, and they'll just yeah. stop coming to games. And then, then the owners will have a real problem because people mm. will not come back. Because mm. then there's also well, the, fan, the, fan, the fan forum is an interesting one because they've they've announced the fan forum, but not Daryl Clark. And um, that's, that's quite... I found that to be quite, I don't know, strange because... Every other one that I've been to or I've watched on YouTube or wherever, generally speaking, the manager or the head coach or whatever, somebody from the coaching staff mm -hmm. anyway, has been present. And I think, I know I've seen a few people read into it, but it just seemed an odd one. I wonder if they've had the protecting him because they know that the fans are unhappy. Mm -hmm. I, I think they always do this. They always wait while we're on a downward spiral. Then they do a fans forum. It's like, could you yeah. not pick a worse time to want to face the fans? <laughs> I think they enjoy it. <laughs> and I've stopped going, me, because I'm sick of listening to the same answers. Because they just give the same same rhetoric every time, you know. And so I've I've stopped going, but I'll still watch it if, they, if they're streaming it, but they've not said whether they're doing that or not. So we'll see. Mm, it is a bit weird, because I, I do think I've seen Cheltenham fans say when they had theirs that Dark Clark didn't come to it. So I don't know if it's a Daryl Clark thing um, that he chooses okay. not to go to it, but again, it wouldn't surprise me if the club did protect him in terms of because he's going to come under a lot of scrutiny um, from fans who are just disheartened of you paid X amount of money and you've seen substandard fo football for what we expect to this season. So it would, I'd understand it if they were protecting him, but I think, I'm sure it was some Cheltenham fans said that he'd done it before. It might have been Port Vale as well. I've said that when they had it, he didn't turn up to it either, which... Found very interesting because, like you say, it's a good opportunity to be open with a manager and ask them questions and a bit try. Cowardly, to get them though, don't you think? It doesn't seem something that would suit his personality for the way in which. Yeah, he I thought it'd, I thought it'd be opposite. I thought it'd be raring to talk to fans and you know really upfront and present, not mm. hiding away. Uh, don't know. Yeah, it is a little bit. Tracy, um, obviously Blackpool, a good side. Um, who you sort of expect pre-season to be in around the top six. Um, and it's going to get quite tight up there at this this point of the season. And as we mentioned so far, since these Bruce come in, only lost one. It's not really the best time to be playing them, really, is it, to be honest? Well, as we've said, I don't think it's ever a good time to play Blackpool because we're always rubbish there. Um, I'm not going to say always, but generally rubbish there. Um, but no, it's not a good... I mean, they... The last two they lost and drew, didn't they? So they they, they sort of were really on a crest of a wave and then they've sort of steadied down a bit. But so, yeah, you don't know what's happened, I suppose, over their training. Hopefully they've been on the beach and it's been really heavy and they've got caught in the water. It's been freezing. So, you know, I think they've had a terrible time. That's what I'm hoping for anyway. Um, yeah, they're in they're in good form. And, I, yeah, I just think... I think Barnsley fans go there always, normally in numbers, Although I think the cost of the tickets this time and the way we're playing will probably yeah. mm. a while since I've been to Blackpool and not sold out and I don't think we have sold out or, or we haven't as yet. Um, and that, that's unusual because it's normally a bit of a fight to get Blackpool tickets because obviously it's quite limited in terms of space for away fans. It's not great because the covering is not very good in the stand you're in. And I think it's it's an, it says something when we've not sold out at Blackpool on a Saturday afternoon because often they'll put them like, you know, Boxing Day or a Tuesday yeah. night. I, was, oh, yeah. I can't believe it. So, I, you know, we know that a lot of people like going for the weekend and still, yeah, so they, drink and yeah. Yeah, yeah. so I think yeah. going there expecting some, you know, it's it's unusual we've not sold out, so that's just something. But I think generally people have had a drink and it's quite a, a positive atmosphere to start with. However, last season, of course, it became probably one of the most toxic atmospheres I've ever 
seen and heard from from Barnes the fans, and obviously that was the end of Neil Collins. So we know that it can it can certainly flip. So um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think it's really important that we start positive um, and we attack and we show endeavour and commitment and enthusiasm because that's the one thing that we haven't shown. And I think he's got to he's got to win the fans back really. Mm. How important is it, Jane, for him to win the fans back on side? Because as we mentioned, as Craig mentioned so far, the fans are a lot more fi- uh, fickle and expect results a lot quicker than what a board yeah. would do. Because obviously, the board know the ins and outs of budgets and targets that we're expected to hit this season, um, and what success looks like in their eyes. Whereas for us, success for us is promotion out of this league. Yeah. Oh, uh, it, it's you need your fans. Your fans can make or break your career. And as Craig rightly pointed out, we can turn so sharp. We can turn on a, on a penny or we can turn so sharp on on managers. And we have done. We have done. We've proved it. But with the biggest fan base to get behind you, if, you, if you're putting the effort in on the pitch, we will literally back you to death. You know, Barnsley fans are loyal, incredibly loyal. Um, but I agree with the, the, it's time's limited. It really is limited. Next couple of games, next uh, three or four games, I'm going to say, run up to Christmas, is going to be the pinnacle time of make or break of his time at Barnsley. We really, really need to see, we need to be coming out of traps. We really do. We need to see the consistency and the effort. And we need to see and understand the tactics as well. Mm. And, and why we're bringing players on and why we're taking players off at a certain time and try and get to grips with it because we've not understood it much of it. At the beginning, there were a little bit, we've not understood much of it so far. I think even when we're playing well, I didn't quite understand these subs. I was like, what? 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 I don't understand that. <clears throat> we need to, he needs to, to, we need to gel more, I'd say. So he needs to show us what he's about as a manager. Um, and them lads as well need we need to see what's happening because at the minute I'm just sat here in total confusion as to what on earth is going off and these next couple of games after this break it may be that we just needed a little bit of a reset I don't know but I think this is going to be the biggest telltale sign of his time at Barnsley yeah 100% just on that, Craig. Sort of as we, as we as fans, had see success as promotion, um, etc. Sort of at least challenging for playoffs. Whilst we know we've got, we've probably got a slightly better team on paper compared to this time last season, just defensively in terms of experience and stuff, it's not showing right r- r- right now. But like this time last season, we're looking at Casper Lepater who jumped up five leagues to come and play week in week out. We're looking at Jack Shepherd to come and feature who jumped a monumental amount uh, amount of leagues to feature week in, week out. Do you think necessarily not getting promoted this season would be a good or uh, a good or bad thing? So obviously there's, there's always been that question around would Luca stay and would Adam Phillips stay? But barring them two, do we have any other sort of champion quality players? Because the way I see it, if we go up next season, we're going to need another a brand new back three more mm-hmm. than likely. We're going to need two new wing backs and we're going to probably need another midfielder in there to help Luca and Adam Phillips at that level. And we're going to need a new front two. Um, it's it's tough because we don't. People's form can jump around, and in it, it can be really good one minute and then really bad another. I yeah. mean, if 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 the whole team raises raises the game and we end up getting promoted by end of the season, it could look like a completely different team to what I'm talking about now. At the minute, we're on a, a downward ebb, and every, nobody looks specifically a championship player but we know we've got players that are championship quality and have shown to be championship quality the the likes of Mark Roberts were only playing there last season um, mm. I think Barry, Cot- Barry Cotter's ceiling's risen since this season um, I think he's a better player than I expected this season as well um, Luke Connell Phillips Fantastic, Craig in midfield. I think he he's possibly a championship standard right now. Not that he's showing it at the minute. Um, Slanina, goalkeeper, he's got a bright future. Maybe not right now championship, but definitely top end league one. Um, but it all comes down to manager because the manager can make or break a team just by by doing what he wants to do. You know. 
if you've got a good manager, he can make he can make players seem ten times better than they are by having a good system that all the players work well in. You know, but if you've got if you can have a famous saying, you can have all best players it will be can't make a play together. Watching England you know, last week. Look at Prince <laughs> Well that's well that's that, that's my point entirely. It's so much comes down to the manager and the minute it looks like he's out in his depth. It looks like it looks like he can't he don't know what to do and that's why he's throwing so much mud around. Because he don't know what sticks yet, and maybe maybe we need a more experienced manager that's mm. not just experienced in promotions, but experienced in football. Of like you know, um, like a Steve Bruce, but you'll never know. Like I say, you don't know who's out there and um, how long he's he's got left in job. But he needs to, he needs to pick up results and fast. Definitely. Tracy, just on that, because obviously we know Daryl Daryl Clark experienced um as a manager, but he's not experienced at this level and sort of this level of expectation on him is being at clubs where it's sort of like Cheltenham Ch- Ch- last season, he will fight fighting fires all season. It's just a case of trying to get people fired up and mo- motivated and trying to sort of galvanize a squad. Whereas you don't really need that when you're challenging for promotion necessarily. He's be a little more pragmatic about it and um know when to try and pick up points when to go for a win but then when you look at the coaching team support supporting him it's still relatively inexperienced it's not like we've got the old ed manager that's then sort of supported yeah. by a younger cook you look at connor who's got what three months of first team experience you got devaney that's coached and managed five games for us he's been he's been a part of, a part of club for a long time but he's only been at barnsley so he's, that's yeah. all he knows is the certain manager coming to learn from and then Dean Whitehead's just gone out as well. It's a very, very young coaching side that we've got as well. And it almost, to me, it feels like it's missing that old red in there that someone that's seen everything, knows how to deal with it, and can provide that assistance and to man manage mm. players and help out with that kind of thing. Yeah, and maybe a bit of calmness, because I think I think Craig's right in that, and we don't know, but I think Daryl Clark has, has probably panicked a couple of times this season where... Is we should have been well in control of a game and we've not been, or we've been chasing a game and we shouldn't have been chasing, and then he's panicked and we've ended up changing formation or throwing on subs and, and it's all then gone crazy. And I think if you did have a, an older, an older head in the coaching staff to say, Whoa, hang on a minute, you know, let's just let's just have a look. Stephen Nidge away is the probably the biggest, I think example of it when we were probably going to get a draw away from Robert Stevenage, which we'd have probably taken because I think that that would have been an all right result and at that time we were doing okay and then he just randomly changed everything at half time and we were hammered um, and that was sort of the beginning of I think our sort of downward spiral and that's an example maybe where somebody else in the changing room might have said to him oh, just hang on a minute things are all right let's do this let's do this so, yeah, we, there's a lot of speculation, well, not a lot of speculation, a lot of comments that I read about, well, look at the size of our coaches, look at this, look at that. We do seem to have a lot of coaches, but, yeah, they are relatively inexperienced. And I think a lot of people are questioning why Uran's not playing. Um, clearly, that's, I think that's him. Because I think, he, I think if he said... I want to be more involved playing, then I think he'd probably get that opportunity. But I think it's him. So I think he wanted to come here as a coach and that's why he ended up coming because I think other clubs didn't offer him probably what we offered him. And yeah, it might have been a, a false a false uh, sort of signing to get people to buy season tickets, whatever it was. But at the end of the day, it is what it is now. Mm. And um, he is a coach. But yeah, he's, what, yeah, you're right, three months into it. So I just think... And at the beginning, he did play a bit. So... Mm. Well, Clark did say that his art's not in playing anymore, it's in coaching. So yeah. I, I think he's purely here just to be a coach yeah. and just step in if needed. I if think he'll only ever play if we are in, if we have a massive yes. injury. Problem. Yeah. So, and as for the others, yeah, I mean, instead, what had he done? Maybe a season at Tampa with Neil Collins? So, and at no real level. So, yeah, I think you're right. And maybe that's something that it, it makes you wonder whether he wanted to bring anybody in, really, because he hadn't brought any of his own. I know Dean White said there was some link, but normally a manager arrives and they bring someone with them. Mm. Um, and he didn't bring anyone because, obviously, Devaney was already there. Urian came as a signing and then Stead was already there. 
So we haven't really got uh, anyone that is brought in. I don't know whether there's a, a trust issue. I have no idea. But, um, yeah, I think you definitely benefit from an older head. Even, you know, they have a, like, a director of football. I know we have Mladen, but, again, I don't think his background is anything to do with coaching. So, yeah, it's um, it's an interesting one. And, yeah, I think he's... The expectations at Barnsley for Daryl Clark are completely different to any expectation that a club he's been to so far, I think. And mm. maybe the job is too big for him. I hope not. I genuinely hope not. I hope he turns it around. I, I don't like seeing managers get sacked so early, I think. I'm not saying, like I said last show, I'm not saying he doesn't deserve it, but I hope he turns it around. I really do. I want it. I want him to do well. And I want, I want us to get behind him because, again, a bit like Neil Collins last year, we never, ever really got behind Neil Collins because the football was boring. This year, we started to get behind him for a couple of games and then we've gone, <laughs> not boring, just awful. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so again, the fans, I don't think the fans have ever really got behind him and I'd really love to see him get a run of two or three games where we're positive and the yeah. fans start to start to get behind him and hopefully things will change. Like I say, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here as a substitute for Al today. So then, <laughs> I have to be positive. I have to be positive. Well, I ain't no Andy substitute. I'll tell you now, you can forget it. <laughs> you got far too much air, Jane. Uh, yeah, no, no. <laughs> um, Jane, where do you sit on the Connor situation? Because obviously, he was signed as a player. Well, he was <laughs> signed as a player. You want me to do it with me? I'm a big fan. Best person to go to for it. But he signed as a player and. As much as he's a coach, and if yeah. he's if he's come out and, and Daryl Clark's has Connor's hearts in coaching, Daryl Clark's still the manager. It's still yeah. his decision of yeah. you're playing on Saturday. Yeah. Do you think it should really sit with Connor? Because there's times that I've seen us play the last few weeks, and I'm like, I love him to just sit at the bottom of that midfield and just use his experience of what five hundred yeah. games and X amount in Premier League, X amount in yeah. Champ, just someone that understands what you need to do right now and tell everyone what to do on that pitch. I'm totally in agreement with you. There's times I've just thought, just get your boots on. Just get your boots on and get out on pitch and just sort it out, will you? You uh, just want to see his legs. I, I don't <laughs> just want to see just his legs, Tracy. <laughs> on the show. Let, let's not pretend. You know I don't hide anything than just about his legs, love. So, <laughs> so, but no, in seriousness, now, Tracy, stop it. So, um, yeah, the, the, the experience he has, obviously, for the team that we have at the minute, would be priceless. And he has come in as a coaching role. He did play a couple of games. He would always be welcome back at all. Well, I don't know whether that were a softener for us, like you've said, uh, whether that were to say, well, we did bring him in as a player manager. So he has done a couple of games, but, you know, or a player coach, but now he's coaching. Um, I think maybe that's him pushing the coach inside and him saying, look, as much as I don't mind playing, we don't know what we're discussing that, uh, on that contract. We don't know what's been discussed in that room. You know, did he did they say to him, you can play five games a season and then the rest is coaching? Or, you know, two or three games, the rest is coaching? We don't know. But there's certainly times when I just think, just get on that pitch and show them. Just, 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 just check it up and show them exactly how it needs to be done. Because he has got some fantastic experience um, that he can pass on, and I'm sure he's doing it through his coaching. But to see it there on on pitch, I think is what is what matters most. So I'd love him to. I would love him to spend some time playing with with the lads and just them learning from him in that way as well as off the pitch. But I don't know what was discussed with him and how mm. what 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 he came to Barnsley under what conditions he's come to Barnsley. So I won't like to say. Yeah. This is a weird one, Craig, isn't it? Because obviously he's almost a perfect player to bring on with 20 yeah. minutes left. You're winning two 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 one. Other side starts to get on top a little bit. Stick stick him on in midfield and just calm everyone down. Because he'll be able to retain possession, he'll be able to, he'll be able to still do a job for 15, 20 minutes in that midfield. It's just a case of having that experience there. Of it's all well and good trying to tell people what to do and coach and what to do, but when you've been there, done it, and felt it, and know what that feels like, it's just so much easier to have. Because it's someone then the players can lean on during a game and be like, "It'll be all right. Connor will fix it for us." Yeah, I think that's what excited us a lot. 
um, even in that Conor and Roberts will win that because last season, the amount of points we we lost in the last 10 minutes of games because we couldn't eke out the victory or even the draw. And we, we were shot absolutely shambolic in the last 10 minutes of games. We thought, all oh, right, really, we're getting a couple of old heads in who know what it's like to to defend a lead and we'll be able to see games like that now. And he's been nowhere near, it, especially in the league. It's like we, we all get excited about the signing. And I do feel like some of the fan base feel like they've been duped because yeah. we wanted Conor Oran, you know, Fair, fair enough, do your coaching thing, but we wanted the player back. You know, the coaching thing is by the by, you know, be a coach when you retire. But while ever you're still a professional footballer, football should come first, especially because you'll be on a, a hell of a higher wage than a normal coach. Because I think players get paid more than coaches do. So, what are you, I mean, what, what are we doing here? You know, at the minute, we're struggling. We need somebody of his experience and professionalism to come in and maybe help Luca out a little bit because Luca's probably, you know, is the captain's role who's, who's better than to have Mark Roberts on one side and Conor Ran on the other side, you know, giving you a bit in an hand. And it seems at the minute like, oh, I'm just doing my coaching, you know, that's it, I'm not, you know, whatever is happening on pitch is not to do with me. <laughs> it's... You know, I think yeah. I think I think fans really wanted the player back, and that's not happened. Yeah, it is a shame. Get your thoughts on um, all we've discussed down in the comments below. Where do you sit on Daryl Clark? Um, is he sort of not on borrowed time yet, but are the next few games crucial for him, or do you think the board should stick with him and sort of at least give him a chance of a window or so or a season to get under his belt? before we start criticising him too much. Um, and as well, Conor Ian, should he be playing more? Should he start with someone of his experience? Right, predictions for Blackpool. Tracy, I'll let you go first. What do you reckon on Saturday? Um, <laughs> what do I reckon or what do I hope? <laughs> uh, well, because I have um, been innately positive tonight and I'm going to remain positive but realistic, uh, I'm going to go for a 2-2 draw. Oh, I thought you were going to do an Al special and point, point two at 2-1 two, two a Conor McCarthy behind you and just say, it's on that shirt there. You've missed a trick there. You had a great opportunity oh, to pull that out. Got it. Put it out, this, and I'll do it. <laughs> oh, I didn't do an Alan, did you? You just didn't, you weren't there. <laughs> no, That's your can't, can't that can't now. <laughs> yeah. Jane, what about you? What, what do you reckon, Saturday? Oh, oh bogey team. But I'm I'm so with Tracy. I'm just so up. I'm so torn because I'm just so hoping for a good start. I'm not going to do a two one because I'm sick of doing two ones. It's so safe in it. Two one just gets your points. Really, really safe. <laughs> two one to them, I guess. Because <laughs> <the worst. laughs> I'm hoping it's the ones. Um, mm, I'm I'm going to go. I'm going to go one nil Barnsley. I think it's going to be, yeah, I'm going to go 1-0 Barnsley. Ooh, 2-2, two, 1-0. Two, one, that opens up a perfect opportunity here, Craig, for you. Yes, go, Craig. <laughs> um, hey, I've got to go with what I think, and I think I can't, I can't see us pulling up any trees. I can't see <laughs> the tinker man stopping me. He's tinkering. I think he enjoys it too much. <laughs> um, I think we're going to lose 2-0. Oh, you yeah, had the opportunity for a 2-1 hey, win. I love it. <laughs> Oh, it's straining the inning. I don't all think we'll score, that. mate. To be fair, I'm being honest. <laughs> you've had all, you've had, you've been waiting for the opportunity all season for a two, for a two one when Norris has picked it. Um, what should I go for? I'm gonna uh, horrible team. Oh, it's tense. I feel quite tense. Oh, mm. oh, what we doing? What we doing? We've. You know, we've been on training pitch working hard all 10 days or whatever it's been. Steve Bruce has only lost one. We never beat Blackpool, so it's going to be quite frankly 3-1 to Blackpool, I reckon. Oh, no! No, 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 no. You froze. No, I did have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what did you go for? 3-1 Blackpool. 
Three oh, one. I just don't. I don't think anything will have changed these ten days. And if it, whenever yeah. we do, whenever we do something on social media to big up what we're doing, the opposite always happens. Yeah, it always <laughs> happens. So it's like we've been training, we've been working out, we've sorted it all out. It's like it's not, is it? If you'd have just stayed quiet for a few weeks, we'd be sound and we'd. I'm a black that poor free foot. Yeah. Bottom of course, we've said this. We always make a run for his own back. Um, and it always happens. Like that time with Ipswich that we'd won, what, 15 or summit, And then Ipswich came lost. And then the season sort of falling apart. Uh-huh. It just, every single time we do things like this, there's, oh, something always pops up. And I, and I get it's people's jobs to do that at the club, and I get it. But every time we do something like this, it uh-huh. never works. It just never works. Yeah. yeah. It always ends like that. Right. Ooh. Get your predictions down in the comments below. Um, Andy will be keeping track of it and I think we're almost at the first 15 games of the season so the first mini league competition will be coming to end soon so if you have only just started predicting that is not a problem because the second mini league will be starting soon as well so keep your eye out for that and we'll be back on Sunday morning with our reaction show to Blackpool we'll see you there New Reds New Reds <laughs>